Dear friends, dear sisters and brothers in Christ, welcome to Congregation of God's people on this Holy Friday. And we will open our service with the sentences we read together. In the shadow of our suffering is the suffering of Jesus. In the shadow of our weakness is the vulnerability of Christ. In the shadow of our pain is the God who cried out, we are never rejected. We are never left alone. Please join me in the response to our confession. We bring to you, O Lord, our awareness of violence in ourselves and the world. We bring to you, O Lord, our anger over the world, over ourselves. We bring to you, O Lord, our Please stand, if you are able, for the words of assurance. The Holy One does not hide from us, but is the 
attentive ear when we cry out. Through community, God restores us to the pathways of life. And now hear sentences of scripture lifting up the last seven words of Jesus. 
beginning with the theme of forgiveness from Luke chapter 23, verses 33 to 34. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. The second reading is from Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, verses 42 through 43. Then the criminal crucified along with Jesus said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And he replied, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. From John chapter 19, verses 25 to 27, theme of relationships. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother, and the disciples whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, here is your mother. Now we read from Gospel of Mark, chapter 15, verses 33 and following. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? John chapter 19, verse 28, the theme of distress. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. Penultimate reading is from Gospel of John. Chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. And from Luke chapter 23, verse 46, the theme of reunion. Then Jesus, crying out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. Dear friends, these passages are called the seven last words of Jesus from the cross. And our choir prepared for us a marvelous Easter concert of the seven last words of Christ by Theodore Dubois. And if you miss it, there is a great recording on our YouTube channel. That music of romanticism is indeed dramatic and spectacular. Unfortunately, the same cannot be said about that whole idea or that whole concept of the last seven words of Christ. Because we do not have 
a single word of Jesus from the cross. From the moment of Jesus' arrest, there is nothing historically reliable there. All the disciples ran away. They were not there. Not even women. The crucifixion had prime purpose to frighten, to scare people, to make them run away. That story about Peter following from a distance and then denying Jesus until the crow, uh, cock crowed, or however it is. <laughs> that is semi-legendary confirmation of this very fact that all abandoned him. All about Jesus' interrogation, crucifixion, and death. Are evangelists attempting to convey to us the reality and meaning of Jesus' brutal death? And it is not history. It is their theology. Gospel of Mark... Our first evangelist speaks about cruelty and alienation of that judicial murder. Matthew concentrates on the execution of a Jewish Messiah. Luke writes about the killing of a prophet and about his knowing and even stoic death. And John our last biblical evangelist wants to highlight the dignified reality of the sacramental death of the heavenly man. Each evangelist has their own theological approach and valuable perspective. That is why they should not be mixed together, because then we are losing it. But how exactly Jesus died? What did Jesus say? We don't know. No one knows. We have no way of knowing. Some try to claim that Mark and Matthew, in their stories, that their account that call of desperation, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, that this, after all, must be an authentic historical fact. Supposedly, the early church would not have made it up. But there is a problem. This is exactly a quotation from Psalm. And that is also exactly how early church used the Hebrew Bible, pointing out those connections and fulfillment prophecies. They would very often use being certain that this speaks about Messiah and not having anything on their hands about Jesus' dying. They would say, he fulfilled what is written in the Hebrew Scripture. So like projecting backwards or forwards. It is almost certain that not even his desperate cry of abandonment is historically authentic. But this oldest testimony highlights exactly such fact. Jesus died alone, completely abandoned, by his disciples, by his followers, by his friends. And then it was taken further and radicalized, expressed theologically. Jesus died abandoned even by God in radical loneliness. Now let us think about it. Let us sing it in. Jesus' death was a death.
of radical, absolute lowliness. So Gospels do not give us anything historically reliable about Jesus' death. But there are still two facts we know for certain and can build upon. Of course, we can build on those individual stories theologically, but to build our faith, we can on these historical facts. First, crucifixion was a form of a state terrorism. And secondly, we know we can prove how great theological earthquake it was, the death of Messiah. So first, Jesus' death was the death caused by extreme form of state violence and state-sponsored and enacted terrorism. I mentioned that it was designed to scare people to submission, to frighten them, to disperse them. Romans crucified to terrorize their slaves and their enslaved people's nations. It was purposefully designed as a form of extreme state cruelty. And here, no, I have to protest that shrieking Taylor Green woman, she was and she is wrong. You cannot compare Jesus' crucifixion with indictment of her despicable friend and scoundrel with decades-long history of criminality. There are unfortunately, other and more tragic and painful parallels in our world. And that is, dear friends, why we have on our church building that banner, Black Lives Matter. A long history of state-sponsored terrorism towards our black neighbors and today, systemic and often government-tolerated violence against black and brown people, and especially black men. Suffocation of George Floyd is coming to my mind every time I think, preach, or see the cross. Because... It's almost identical dying, friends. On cross, those crucified were dying slowly, suffocated to death while restrained on that cross. And that is what we know about George Floyd and his death. Or brutal beating to death of Tyre Nichols that is also state-instigated, sponsored terrorism. Or do you want a different example where is Christ crucified today? Look at the numbers of the children killed by firearms in our nation not only in schools, in mass shootings, but by homicides and accidents. In our nation, those numbers are 20 times higher than in other similar countries. The numbers of children killed in our nation by firearms is higher than children killed by firearms in active war zones. Yes, those are more killed there, but they are not killed by firearms. That is our scandal of state-sponsored terrorism 
when innocent victims are paying with their lives for ease and convenience of the corrupt politicians. That is a direct parallel between historical Jesus and our times. And then there is that other thing we can know with great certainty. And I must mention Jesus' crucifixion was a proper ground-shifting religious earthquake. Complete philosophical and religious paradigm shift. Upturn. Realignment of our faith and religion, at least in good hope. Messiah was crucified and died. Up until that time, that was an anathema, a blasphemy. And for many people it might be still. God and God's Messiah was supposed to be superhero, omniscient, omnipotent, all-knowing, all-powerful. But then, God did not come to save Jesus with regiments of angels. That was a religious scandal. It took disciples by surprise, and it took them some time to figure it out. They were figuring it out, and we can put our finger on it as they were writing the New Testament. Because God was and is not Deus ex machina, that kind of God puppeteer of the world, pulling the strings and making everything to work exactly according to the God's will. Because that would make God pretty violent and dangerous God. This imperial God, God is not like that. God does not use violence to save the world. God is present in the world and act in the world by divine loving example. Even self-sacrifice. And God is asking us through that, pulling us in, challenging us. Should the Roman Empire or the Roman empires of all times and their cruel violence should they have the last word over this world what do we say should death rule or should love live I think that I have there someone agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, please join me now in our response. With heavy hearts and heavy world, we meet you this night, O Christ, in your clenched hands, stretched and nailed. You gather us. With strength only you can give, even now. And with a courage only you can know, may we find you in the powerless of the world. And as life teeters and eternity weeps, may we see through love's pain into love's promise and love's victory.
Now please join us in our prayer of commitment. We will not go from here believing this is all there is. We, we will, will believe, believe through the, the night, night and, and we, we will, will believe, believe into the, the dawn. dawn. We will not go from here believing this is all there is. We will, we will believe, believe beyond torture and, and we, we will believe, believe into freedom. freedom. We will not go from here believing this is all there is. We will believe against spectacles of evil and we will believe into divine healing touch. We will not go from here believing this is all there is. We will, we will believe, believe beyond alienation and loneliness, and we will believe into, into the embrace of divine love. We will not go from here believing this is all there is. We will believe against the darkness, and we will believe into the light. We will not go from here, believing this is all there is. We will, we will believe, believe beyond, beyond the cross, and we will believe, believe through to the resurrection. We will not go from here, believing this is all there is. We will, we will believe, believe through the, the night, and, and we, we will believe, believe into the dawn. dawn. 